السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام. السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته. اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم، بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على المبروك يا رحمه للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد. احبابنا صلى الله عليه الصلاه والسلام ورحمه الله وبركاته في النبي صلى الله سبحانه وتعالى in the month of Ramadan before Maghrib as we wait to do our iftar together. Let's take a few moments, inshallah, to reflect on some of the ayat in the Quran from Surah Yusuf. Those of you who follow our content regularly would know that we are on a journey to study the life and times of Prophet Yusuf using the Surah of Yusuf in the Quran to come with the life of this great Prophet from when he was a child all the way to he became a successful man. Uh, we do not have time to review because Technically, his foster mom, he was living with her. She helped raise him, but the evil desire that she had caused her to try to create a fitna, you know, for Yusuf السلام, where she wanted to engage in the fahisha, she wanted to engage in the haram with this young man who was living with her. And we spoke about how, you know, she closed all of the doors and she tried to convince Yusuf السلام, to commit the evil act. Yusuf السلام, ran for the door, he opened the door, he found her husband was coming towards the room. And in that moment, she was grabbing his shirt to try and hold him back. The shirt ripped. And the family member who was a witness, he gave that excellent idea that look where the shirt is ripped. If it's ripped from the back, then the lady is the one who was going after Yusuf. If the shirt is ripped from the front, then Yusuf was going after the lady and she was defending herself. Now, after all of that happened, all of this we studied up until last week, we reach ayah number 30 in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Taban in Surah Yusuf, وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ مُرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّا إِنَّا لَنَرَاهَا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Allah says the ladies of the town, right? So these are the other, you know, females who live in the same city. They started to talk among themselves. And they said, إِمْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ The wife of the Aziz, the wife of that minister, تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ She is trying to seduce a young boy. قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّا An uncontrollable amount of love and attraction for him has entered into her heart. إِنَّا لَنَرَاهَا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Verily we see her to be severely misguided. She's doing something very bad. And here's something for us to reflect on. You're going to see in the next ayah that these women who lived in the same city as the Aziz and as Yusuf alayhi salam it's not that they were righteous in any way on their own. It's not that they were good, you know, pious, God-fearing people. But they took advantage of the poor behavior and of the misdeeds of somebody in their town to gossip. Right? Just something for us to relate to in the current world that we live in. We see this all the time, right? The gossip culture among celebrities and among, you know, famous people in the world, is quite popular. The people who gossip and talk about the stories of actors or movie stars or politicians, it's not that they themselves are righteous, right? So when they you know, talk about the scandal that this politician, he did this or she did that, or this person hooked up with that person, it's not that the people narrating the story are righteous and they're coming from a perspective of this is so evil, how did they do this? We should avoid this kind of behavior. No, it's just as good, you know, conversation. It's something that can go viral. It's something that's trendy. It's something that's a hot topic. And people enjoy talking about people's private lives. That's just the reality, right? So these women in the town, it's not that they were righteous and they wanted, you know, goodness. But they were just gossiping and talking about the you know, evil practice and the evil behavior in the town. Allah says, فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنَّ أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَعْتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأَ وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُنَّ سِكِّينَ وَقَالَتِ اخْرُجْ عَلَيْهِنَّ 
I'm going to go through this ayah very quickly, inshallah. Allah says, when you know that lady heard about what was being discussed, she called for Yusuf alayhi salam. Here, for those of you who are following with me regularly, an important nukta, important point to make note of. At this point, Yusuf alayhi salam is still in the house. He's still living there with her. So she calls Yusuf alayhi salam and she invites all of her friends and all of the ladies of the town. She basically wants to show them that don't blame me and don't think I'm crazy, that it's just a little boy that I'm trying to hook up with. You should see the guy that I'm trying to get with. And she gave them, you know, a knife. And the tafsir mentions that they had some fruits that they were cutting, sitting in a gathering, they were cutting their fruits. Each of them had a knife in their hand. Allah says, فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ وَقَطَّعْنَا أَيْدِيَهُنْ When Yusuf salam came, because this lady is his boss, she's the one who gives him instruction, she told him maybe to come bring something for us, bring napkins, bring cups, whatever the story is. So Yusuf salam he came. These ladies, when he entered, they all were caught off guard and they started looking at him while they were cutting what was in their hand. Eventually they cut their hand itself. That's how distracted they were by the good looks of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. My young friends who are here, has anybody cut their hand looking at you before? Soon? <laughs> right? So Yusuf alayhi salam, when the ladies saw him, they got so overwhelmed and so distracted by looking at him that they ended up cutting their hand. Yani meaning their fingers. They said after that, وَقُلْنَا حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ They said, whoa, this is not a human. This has to be some kind of angel or something else. Right? Uh, then, after this incident was over, I'm going quickly so we can wrap up, inshallah. After this incident was over, everyone went back to their regular life. The lady, this lady, the wife of the Aziz, where Yusuf was living in her house, she tried again to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam and Allah says, وَلَقَدْ رَاوَتْهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ فَاسْتَعْصَمْ وَلَإِنْ لَمْ يَفْعَلْ مَا آمُرُهُ لَيُسْجَنَنَّ وَلَيَكُونَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Now formally she threatened Yusuf alayhi salam. She said, listen, you know what I asked you about last time? I'm asking you again, if you don't comply, if you don't do what I ask you to do, meaning if you don't come with me and we go alone and do the haram together, I'm going to make sure that you are humiliated and you will end up in prison. Right? Just imagine, you know, the level of challenge and the level of test that Sayyidina Yusuf is facing. Right? The lady is saying, by the way, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us, how many a young man or young woman would willingly engage in this type of behavior? Sayyidina Yusuf is not just being invited to engage in the behavior, he's being threatened that if you don't comply, your life is going to be miserable. What did Sayyidina Yusuf salam say? At this point he said, قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيَّ Oh Allah, going to jail is more, you know, it's a better option for me than to go do what she's asking me to do. And if you don't protect me and you don't save me from her, then I might end up being among those ignorant people who fall into this mistake or who fall into this sin. We see that Sayyidina Yusuf salam, in the face of the disobedience of Allah, in the face of the opportunity to go against the order of Allah, he prefers, he's willing to sacrifice his own freedom in this dunya, rather than to do something that will be against the order of Allah that will cost him in the akhirah. For me and you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to the straight path, and may he keep us upon guidance. We don't have to choose between going to jail and following the command of Allah. We know the command of Allah, we know what is right, we know what is wrong. All we have to do is commit to doing what is right, and avoiding what is wrong. It sounds easy, a reminder for myself first before anybody else, it sounds very easy, but it's something that we have to make effort every day in our life, every morning that we wake up, we have to renew our intention that we are living in this dunya to seek the pleasure of Allah. Ultimately, the challenge and the struggle in this life is to do whatever it takes to make sure Allah is happy with us, so that when we meet Him in the Akhirah, He will allow us access into Jannah. In this blessed month of Ramadan, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire us all to take benefit from the example of Yusuf alayhi salam and to take benefit from the example of all of the Anbiya and the Salihin who came before us so that we can walk in their footsteps and inshallah we can visit them in the highest levels of Jannah. I'll take two minutes inshallah. 
to give you guys an opportunity very quickly and if not I'll share some faida with you guys inshallah and that is do you guys have any questions related to zakat zakat is something that is very important I can't talk about it because time is up everybody knows how important zakat is it's the pillar of Islam Allah says in the Quran multiple times aqimus salah wa atu zakat pray your salah pay your zakat anybody have any specific questions about zakat if not I'll share something with you guys Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Since there are no questions, let me share some idea with you. Many people, if you guys had more time, I know you will ask more questions. Many people have lots of questions about how to calculate their zakah, how to pay their zakah. Maybe next week, inshallah, maybe we can dedicate the halakha to some reflection about zakah. Maybe. I'm not promising. Um, but one question that always comes up is when to calculate my zakah. When should I calculate and pay my zakah? And the simple answer, I'm sharing with you our strategy. The simple answer is the Muslim should use the month of Ramadan as a reference point. That every Ramadan I calculate my zakah. And you choose when. For me, first of Ramadan. For you, somebody might say 27th of Ramadan. Somebody may say last day of Ramadan, 15th of Ramadan. For me personally, first day of Ramadan. First day of Ramadan, first day of every Ramadan, I calculate how much money I have left over from last year. And then I calculate the 2.5% and I give it in zakat. Right? Comes another question, can I pay my zakat ahead of time? Do I have to pay it in Ramadan? The answer here is you can pay your zakat ahead of time, you can never pay your zakat after the time. So what you can do, Methodan as an example, between last Ramadan and this Ramadan, maybe last year in September, I found out that there was an earthquake. So I donated $200 to help the survivors of the earthquake. Then in October, we found out about the crisis in Palestine. So I donated another $300 towards our brothers and sisters over there to help them with their need. So I have donated between last Ramadan and this Ramadan $500. At the first day of Ramadan, I calculate my zakah. I find out that I owe Allah $1,000 of zakah. Then I do the mental math. I have already given 500 during the year. May Allah accept. What is remaining? 500. That 500, I now have to pay it immediately. Immediately, I need during the month of Ramadan, I have to distribute and make sure the balance of my zakah reaches those people who are most deserving of it. This is a little hint and a little tip about how you can efficiently calculate your zakah. Calculate once a year. Pay throughout the year, wherever you have, find out that there is a need, feel free to distribute your zakah as needed. At the end, when Ramadan comes, figure out what is left that you owe. That has to be paid immediately. We have time for one question. You have 30 seconds. None. No, you have to find out who to give it to before time. The reason, you have to, this is your responsibility. Uh, hard, no hard, this is something that you have to be prepared for. Not masajid, you have to find where is the poor and needy people that you can give the zakat to. Wallahi, toughest part, the price, I will close with this. If you don't do your homework and you're late to pay your zakat, the price is not by my word, by the word of Allah and His Messenger, the price is Jahannam or Bits al Masir. There's no joke, when it comes to zakat, every Muslim should do their homework. How much money do I have? Where can I pay zakah? Yani don't tell me in the Ummah of Islam there's no people who are in need. There is people left, right and center who need our zakah just to survive tomorrow. Then do your homework one year in advance. Find out now where you will give your zakah next year. With that we conclude. Let's make dua quickly inshallah before we make the adhan for Maghrib and break our fast. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fast and to accept our duas and to put barakah in our time and to put barakah in our life. And to grant us the best in this world and the best in the next life, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to guide our families to the straight path and to keep us upon the straight path and to enable us all to live and die as Muslims. Salam, us and our children and their children and their children until the end of time. My father and his friends have arrived. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep all of our parents in good health and to give them a long and healthy life. For the children who are here, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of success for them in this dunya and to open the gates of Jannah for them in the next life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the great reward of fasting during the day of Ramadan and praying during the night of Ramadan. And may he write for all of us the reward of Laylatul Qadr. Hatha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik. 
على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته احباب where is our